Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start this lecture 20 with a simple thought process a mighty flame emanates from a tiny spark. If you look at we are basically discussing about uh, the chemistry of combustion right. And in the process we looked at law of mass action, then we moved into the collision theory to find out reaction rate. If you recall the reaction rate is proportional to not only the concentration of the species participating species and also it will be uh, dependent on the activation energy and also the pre exponential factor which comes from the collision theory. And that uh, reaction rate coefficient which is determined from the collision theory is based on what you call is known as the Arrhenius law right. And what we will do, we will take an example today, how to use this Arrhenius law and also whether we can uh, determine the activation energy by conducting experiment or not that we will illustrate through this example. And uh, this example is basically a vessel you know which contains 10 power to minus 6 mole per centimeter cube of nitrogen dioxide at 650 Kelvin right. If you look at it, it is basically isothermal reaction which is decomposed into the following reaction that is 2 NO 2 goes to 2 NO plus O 2. Keep in mind that this is in one direction the reaction can also come in the backward direction as well. This is the forward direction, backward direction, but we are considering at this moment only the forward direction. We need to determine the reaction rate of NO2 assuming K f to be 770 centimeter Q per mole second. And we need to also determine the activation energy if this reaction rate is obtained uh, as the 400 centimeter cube mole per second at another temperature that is 600 Kelvin right. So, the these are two parts one is that we need to determine the reaction rate of NO2 where K f is given. If K f is given then is it possible we can find it out right. We will have to basically apply the law of mass action K f is known to it known to you and then we can determine what is the reaction. Let us do that that is a simple part. And of course, here we are assuming the reaction to be elemented in nature. What is the meaning of elementary reaction that we will try to discuss maybe after this example, but keep in mind that the law of what you call Arrhenius sorry the Arrhenius form of equation is valid only for the elementary reaction, but however, we will be using for the global reaction as well and law of mass action also right is also valid for the elementary reaction only ok. So, therefore, whenever we are applying the law of mass action we should keep in mind that reaction must be elementary, but you must know what is elementary reaction and how it is different from the other reaction and how many kinds of elementary reaction one can think of those things we will learn, but before that let us look at this problem. So, reaction rate is equal to minus half d c n o 2 divided by d c. What is it saying? This is a rate of concentration of n o 2 with respect to you know time of course, rate when I saying it is means it is time and of course, the minus sign is there because it is being decomposed therefore, it is minus and half of course, I have taken because 2 n o 2 is participating which is equal to k f that is 
reaction uh, coefficient right reaction rate coefficient and C N O 2 square right. Why this square comes into picture because the coefficient in this reaction is 2 and it is an elementary reaction. So, that is stoichiometric coefficient right. So, therefore, it comes as a square and then what you will do we because concentration is given this is your concentration of N O 2 and this is known this is known you just substitute those values and get the answer which is very simple. That is at you know 650 Kelvin that is reaction rate is equal to minus half d C N O 2 by d t and you just substitute these values for k f from here and then C N O 2 square you will get this value 0 0.77 into 10 power to minus 9 mole per centimeter cube is a very very small quantities if you look at right. And activation energy for this reaction can be estimated by knowing the specific reaction rate or the reaction rate coefficient you know both are same at two different temperature. So, one is 650 other is uh, of course, the 600 Kelvin. So, we must know those values and K f is known. So, we can determine that is at T 1 it will be L n K 1 is, is equal to L n A minus E by T 1 R E. How it is coming? Because we know that K 1 is equal to A E by R T 1 right. Of course, this is R E right. So, if I take both the side log the natural get L L n K 1 is equal to L n A minus E divided by T 1 R u. Similarly, I will do for the at the temperature T 2 that is L n K 2 is equal to L n A minus E divided by T 2 R u. R u is, is the universal gas constant right. What I will do? I will just say like equation 1 minus equation uh, like equation A minus equation B will give what? If I just say this is minus and it cancel it out what will happen. So, this became minus, this became minus, this became plus. So, this will cancel it out right. What I will get? I will get L n k 1 minus L n k 2 is equal to E by R T 2 minus E by T 1 R E right. I can get that and we will simplify this and get those expression because now E is both are same. So, we need to determine E from this equation and I know K 1 is known, K 2 is known and T 1 is known, T 2 is known, R u is of course, the same. So, you can very easily determine what will be E. Let us look at that. That is E become R u T 1 T 2 divided by T 1 minus T 2 L n K 1 by K 2. So, all these are known K 1, K 2, T 1, T 2 R u. So, you just substitute those values and you will get that is 42.5 kilo joule per mole. Keep in mind that the unit must be same this is very important otherwise you know it you will be land in some different values. So, what we have learned from here? We have learned that activist energy can be easily estimated once experimental data is available. Of course, most of the experiments are conducted under isothermal conditions because where you can maintain temperature. We have seen that it is the reaction rate is you know strongly dependent on the temperature. So, therefore, you know is a very minor change in this example it is only the 50 Kelvin difference and it is if you look at the reaction rate has been changed. If you look at the specific reaction rate is changing from 770 to 400 you know only 50 degree 50 Kelvin difference. So, therefore, it is very important to conduct in the reaction in the isothermal condition right. Generally most of the data whatever we get we use isothermal unless otherwise stated and of course, in some small reaction why it is so sensitive this k f or k uh, the specific reaction rate constant to temperature in this example right. Why 
or is it true only for this example or it is different for different reaction. Because it goes exponential, right? And if you remember, I had shown you how this reaction rate will be changing with respect to the temperature. For example, if I would plot it here, reaction rate with the temperature, if you look at it in the beginning, the it will be reaction rate will be going like this and then it will be coming like that. Now, it increases, you know, at a very rapid rate whenever it will be going towards high temperature, but why it is going down here? Do you think about it? Last time I had discussed this, but I, I did not discuss about you know in detail, but I thought you will be thinking and asking me a question, why it is so? Can anybody tell me? Dissociation always will be occurring or some reaction will be occurring, but why it is going up? Because it is exponential, we have seen that k you know is equal to a power t e by r t. And why there will not be any reaction which will be there in this temperature? Because the activation energy you know like may not be having that high. So, it will be remaining, I have exaggerated little bit, it will be remaining almost constant in the low temperature, and then it will suddenly going up, right. But why it will go up? Because it is having activation, it will go up, but why it will go down? Because whatever the participating space is, is there, it will getting consumed. And if concentration is not there, if you look at reaction rate will be k into c of a, c b or maybe 1 or 2 something. If I look at c a, a plus b is going to the d, you know, or if I am saying uh, c if I am saying that A is reacting is going to the C, right. So, this will be C A C B, right. Okay. So, therefore, this reaction rate if C A is coming to 0, what will happen to the reaction rate? Then it will be coming to the 0 here, even though temperature is higher. Are you getting a point? Similarly, if C B is 0 or C B is very, very small or one of them is 0, then it will come to this, even though temperature is very high, right. Is that clear? I was thinking you will think about it and if you will not get the way you can ask me right. Okay. So, let us now get into elementary reaction. So, if you look at what do we call it elementary if the reaction occurs successfully at a molecular level the reaction is termed as elementary. In this example if O H is reacting with a hydrogen molecule it is going to water and the H right. If you look at water is a stable molecule, hydrogen also a stable molecule. What about OH? Is it stable? What do you mean by stable? And this OH or the H, what do we call is a radical? These are very reactive in nature, their life time will be very small and it will be going and reacting, you know, as you, uh, we have discussed already about the molecules being collided as a result there will be breaking of bonds old bonds and forming of new bonds right. So, therefore, these reactions where there will be molecules or even atoms are involved in that and some of the you know like radicals are formed right then we call those as a elementary reactions right. And these elementary reactions will be dependent on what? It will be dependent on molecularity, but what is the molecularity then? That means, number of molecules will be participating in a reaction will determine the molecularity of a reaction, right. That means, as I told number of molecules or atoms participating in reactant in each reaction leading to a product. In this example, O H is reacting with hydrogen going to the water and H. So, if you look at the molecules are participating here and it is going to a product, product means it need not to be stable alone, it can be any other thing, right. That means, there is a change. So, based on this molecularity, right, in this uh, reaction, if you look at the two are participating OH and hydrogen, therefore, we call it a bimolecular reaction. Similarly, if it is a single molecule, 
and it is decomposed, then we call it as a unimolecular reaction. So, the reaction can be broadly divided into three categories, it need not to be three, even four also, but they are four molecules coming together and reacting are you know less likely to happen in nature, therefore, that is not being considered. However, nobody can rule it out. Okay. So, therefore, the reaction can be you know based on this molecule it will divide into three categories unimolecular reaction N 2 O 5 is decomposed into 2 N 2 O 5 plus O 2 that is a because one molecule nitrogen pentaoxide is being decomposed. So, therefore, it is a unimolecular reaction, but if I consider the backward reaction can it be unimolecular backward reaction means N 2 O 4 is reacting with oxygen is going to the N 2 O 5, we have seen anything can happen either reaction can be forward, reaction can be backward as well. So, at that time it is not unimolecular, only for the forward reaction in this example is known as unimolecular reaction. Bimolecular reaction you know where two molecules are participating or rather two reactants like CO2 and hydrogen, it is going to the water and carbon monoxide right? and that is known as bimolecular. Fortunately, both the forward and the backward are bimolecular in this example. Right? Similarly, trimolecular reactions is where three molecules are being part are being participated like CO2 O plus M is going to the CO2 plus M. M is known as a third body reactions third body reaction means it will be not participating actively in the reaction, but his presence will be required. For example, a referee you know in the play games of course, the referee role is different, but he must be there to any you know uh, games to be uh, conducted right, but he would not play in the games right, but his presence is required. And what is this M can be in real example, M can be anything it is a stable, it is basically stable species like water, oxygen, right, hydrogen or carbon dioxide, those are basically stable species. That means, which would not be unless otherwise you know large amount of energy will be available, which is beyond their activation energy to decompose, but keep in mind that each reaction will be having certain activation energy, unless otherwise the reaction or the participating species possess that amount of energy you know beyond this threshold value of activation energy the reaction would not occur. So, therefore, those are stable species of course, one may be stable species for one reaction, but it need not to be stable species for the other reaction it may be participating. So, therefore, these are known as third body reactions right and third body reaction will be more uh, important in case of higher pressure when the reaction is occurring at higher pressure third body reaction is very important. So, now when you talk about molecularity, but there is another one we talk about order of reaction question arises what do you mean by order of reaction right. You know the order of mathematical equation like algebraic equation P D partial differential equation O D is like we know order of rea order of equation we know. But similarly, we need to understand what is the order of reaction, which you must be knowing I guess. So, that means, it will dictate basically how many you know uh, species are being participated and not only that, that is of course, you can say that you know number of molecule molecularity, but it will be depending on the number of molecules atom whose concentration would determine the reaction rate. That means, it basically comes from the law of mass action right. If I take this example of N 2 O 5, it is decomposed to N 2 O 4 plus O 2. If I look at this forward reaction alone, then what will be the reaction rate? Reaction rate will be D C N 2 O 5 D T is equal to minus K F C N 2 O 5. In this case, what will be the order of reaction? Can anybody tell me? It will be only first order of reaction, right? It is a decomposed reaction, so therefore, it will be first, but 
if I consider the backward reaction then what it would be? It will be 3 basically right not 2. So, we will take uh, some example to reinforce this ideas of order of reaction as I told that whenever uh, the first order reaction will be there then it will be one need to consider only one uh, you know concentration kind of things coefficient of the participating spaces will be one in the example of hydrogen going to the 2 H. In this case reaction rate is basically d C S 2 divided by d T is equal to k f C S 2 keep in mind this minus negative sign because it decompose. So, it will be half d C H by d T right I can this I have put other way around right because C H. So, therefore, one up come comes into picture right and if you look at I can write down k f c s 2 and this is from the basically law of mass action you can say. And the examples of first order reaction of course, any decomposition reactions like O 2 is going to 2 O N 2 is going to 2 N O 2 plus half O 2 is basically first order reaction provided you are considering only the forward reaction that means, in this direction I can say this is forward reaction right k f backward reaction of course, it need not to be it would not be right in this example. So, similarly second order reaction let us uh, consider a order of uh, you know second order bimolecular reaction hydrogen reacting with I 2 iodine going to 2 H I right. So, the reaction rate you can write down d C S 2 d T minus k f C S 2 C I 2 right. In this case there are two concentration right whose which will be determined what will be the reaction rate one is hydrogen other is I 2 iodine. So, therefore, it will be a second order reaction. And uh, there are several example if you look at lot of reaction which are involved uh, in combustion particularly second order reaction some of the example I have given and uh, OH plus hydrogen going to the water plus H O plus S 2 going to the O H plus H and H plus O 2 going to H plus O. So, there are several reaction which will be occurring even in hydrocarbon hydrogen oxygen systems all those are important these are second order reactions right. So, and let us look at uh, third order reaction trimolecular 2 N O plus O 2 going to the 2 N O 2 we are considering only forward reaction in this example. So, therefore, the reaction rate will be d C N O 2 will be d T is k f C N O 2 square and C O 2 and if you look at here there is no negative sign because N O 2 is being formed and we are considering other way around right. So, therefore, if you look at this is basically the uh, what you call the third order reactions right because it is coming from N O and O 2. So, therefore, there is no negative sign. So, reaction rate proportional to third power of the concentration of participating species. So, therefore, we call it a third reaction. Some of the example which uh, you know um, third order reactions which occur in combustion we I have shown here H O plus O and third body that the M is going to O S 2 plus M H plus H plus H that means you know it is very less likely to occur, but also people say that it is occurring that means H and you know atom has to come through together and collided and form a hydrogen and H and 2 N O plus O 2 going to the 2 N O 2 right. And if you look at all these you know forward reactions are third order nature whereas, the reverse reaction need not to ok. So, these are basically the reaction uh, you know um, kind of uh, reaction rates which is governed by the order of reaction right and which I am not going to discuss further, but their concentration with respect to time can be varied differently for different order of reactions. Uh, if some of you are interested you can refer to standard books on combustion and of course, you can refer my book fundamental of combustion. <coughs> So, now let us look at the chain reactions you know which is very important 
like what do you mean by chain reaction? Is it really in combustion chain reaction occur? Certainly yes, because if you look at the all the reactions are occurring in chain manner, right? Chain in the sense you initiate something, right? And then if something will be propagating, like for example, if you look at you know like uh, you know if you look at a family, suppose a father and uh, you know mother will produce a kid and then that kid will be uh, and producing another kids, you know it will be go on, right. So, it will be terminated of course, one person will die, it terminated of the this thing. So, it goes on that is a chain. So, all nature is a chain of actions. Similarly, chemical reaction is a part of nature, therefore, it is you know chain of action will be taking place. So, therefore, chain reaction will be there. So, in the reality combustion process involves several reaction as I have told and it is not that methane is reacting with oxygen going to the carbon dioxide and water in enormous or numerous you know reactions will be taking place between these steps which is global in nature. So, overall stoichiometric chemical reaction is unlikely to occur in nature. I have told several times because you know lot of people believe from their childhood from their you know earlier studies that this is the reaction which occur. In order to eliminate in order to remove that you know bogus idea of that is occurring I am repeating several, several times. So, that is nature never occurs is just a model and elementary reaction can be classified into elementary means basically chain reactions you know which will be occurring into four categories. One is chain initiating that means you know initiation will occur. Initiation is very important we do like you people may not be knowing in earlier our systems and sisters where you know students are being initiated right. How they are initiated? Initiated by the teacher to start their life to learn and they start learning and again teaching and then it goes on. So, chain branching of course, they will go and start some another school you know thought of schools and then chain carrying some of them ideas they carry forward in their life and chain terminating some of the chain will be terminated. So, that will we will take one by one like chain initiating if you look at if I consider the oxygen O reacting with hydrogen molecule and both are you know stable species keep in mind. And in this case what is happening that means, one oxygen molecule is coming and colliding with another hydrogen molecule as a result the hydrogen is being broken, but oxygen remains of course, other way around it can occur depending on the prevailing situation. Because all are probabilities you know all are depend upon the what temperature, what pressure you know what is concentration all those are available. So, in this case what is happening these are radicals you know radicals which are very important to carry forward the reactions, because these are very energetic you know atoms molecules right. So, therefore, this will be chain carrying. So, going to the oxygen right. So, this is basically initiation the stable and you make the stable to be unstable and converting into the carrying forward lot of energy. So, that is chain initiate chain reaction and chain branching where you know ratio of number of free radicals in the product to reactant will be greater than 1 then only we call it as a chain branching. For example, O 2 is reacting with the H is another radical going to O H plus O in the product how many radicals are there 2 in the reactant side it is 1. So, 2 divided by 1 you know. So, therefore, this ratio is greater than 1 right kind of thing because 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 is 2. So, is greater than 1 therefore, this chain branching reaction. So, chain carrying where the ratio of number of free radicals in the product to the reactant is equal to 1 
that means there is nothing is happening, but the process is going on right. It is I, I give an example a son you know, suppose he is taking over the business of a person, he is just managing whatever the profit he was having, but he is not increasing that means, he is carrying forward, but he is not branching you know in this example. So, that means, in this example hydrogen reacting with OH going to the water and H if you look at in the right hand side H is one radical, in the left hand side only one radicals right and both are of course, other two are stable species right. So, therefore, this is known as chain carrying reaction and chain terminating where the ratio of number of free radical in the product to the reactant is less than 1. That means, you are basically you know reducing the number of radicals when you are doing that you call it chain terminating because it cannot carry forward the successful reactions because the radicals are one which make the uh, you know reaction to carry forward right so it's basically terminated hydrogen is reacting with o going plus another of course the third body is going to water plus m m of course third body means is a stable for that particular reaction right and water is already stable there is no radical in this case of course in this example right but there in some example it may be there might be a radical in the product but those number of uh, radicals will be less than that of the number of radicals in the reactant so therefore that can be considered as a chain terminating reaction so these reaction will be going on and on and then only you know varieties of things will be happening so now we, what we have seen is basically elementary reaction which will be occurring in nature but we will be more interested in global kinetics or the global reaction, because it is not easy to really handle so many chemical reactions, particularly when we are trying to model something right. Because those uh, as I go along I will tell uh, show you or even the second order reaction, third order reactions and other things those are non linear in nature right. You, have, you might have looked at reaction rate, it is dependent on temperature, it is also dependent on concentration right. If I look at the equation then you need to solve both the concentration and temperature both are dependent. So, it is a quite non-linear in nature. So, therefore, to solve those is quite difficult right. So, and in practical situation it is difficult to use multi-step chemistry models in engineering application. For example, like combustion process in gas turbine or you can think of in rocket engines or any other engine even in internal combustion engines is quite difficult, because in several number of you know spaces which will be participating. So, therefore, we need to look at elementary reaction or global kinetics, where we will look at one mole of you know methane is reacting with two moles of oxygen going to the product C O 2 and water right. It is a very simple global reaction in nature is not occurring, but we are assuming it as a model and looking at it. So, when you look at this whether of course, I have already emphasized this thing uh, whether this reaction occurs in nature or not certainly no, it can never occur, but however, we will be interested in overall reaction rate that is d c h by d t to a e power to the minus e by r u t of course, c c h 4 m and c o 2 n. So, these m and n these are coefficient which are to be determined right uh, by some mathematical tools and so also the activation energy e and pre exponential factor a. So, those values will be available by doing some kind of a mathematical model such that it can replicate the heat release profile right, because we are interested to how much heat being released and if it could manage to do that with this global you will be happy, but however, there is a lot of problem associated with it as well. <coughs> so, therefore, it is having limitation and uh, maybe when more computers and other things will be developed or maybe some other means maybe we can use elementary reactions in modeling even people have started using using the brute force of computers. So, 
this is about methane, but we will look at global kinetic scheme of an arbitrary hydrocarbon C x h y, which we have already discussed earlier. It can be you know C 1 h 4, right. It is methane, if x is 1, y is 4. Similarly, if x is 2 and h is 6, it will be ethane, propane, butane like that you can go on. So, if I take this reaction arbitrary hydrocarbon C x h y plus x plus y by 4 in the bracket moles of oxygen reacting giving rise to product of x C O 2 plus y by 2 water. Right. For that reaction you can write down basically C x h y d t and minus a f e power to C x y m and n. Of course, these values you know m and n and e all those values must be known to you to use it. Okay. So, those values I am not going to discuss it is there in my book. So, you can use those values. So, let us look at a multi step reaction mechanism because I felt that let us look at what do you mean by that. right? And uh, uh, because you may not have a feel what it is, I will just show you a very simple model, right, and which looks to be quite complex in nature. But if you look at this, is only uh, maybe around 14 species kind of things, and then 40 reaction you can think of, right. But however, this is not adequate to uh, you know model the methane air chemistry, which is the simplest hydrocarbon. Right. For example, I will just give you for example, C H 4 is can react you know can react with H or can be O or O H, it can go to C S 3 and several other products. Similarly, C S 3 can react with O, it can go to C S 2, C S 2 can be you know collided with uh, stable species M, O, O H go to C H O, several others you know products I am not saying what will be. C H O again may be react with M O 2 O H and going to C O and C S 3 can be colliding with C S 3 going to C 2 S 6. There is a possibilities similarly C S 3 can react with H you know like C S 3 it can go to C 2 H and some others. Similarly, C 2 H can go back react with H go into the C S 3 there is all permutation combination will be goes on and similarly, C 2 H is uh, reacting with H going to C 2 H and some other molecule C 2 H can react with H and O H going to C S 3, C S 2 O, C H O so on so forth. So, if you look at I mean it is goes on and then you can get C O you can get from C O from some other channel there are several channels which will be going on the way our society works you know like because we do work in a similar fashion you know for example, you may be an engineer, but you may take interest in your family, it may take interest in some other thing may be literature you know you will be doing interacting lot of things goes on natural way right. So, the reactions what I am showing you is a very simple thing and what it is it is having a 14 spaces and 40 forward reaction and 40 backward reaction. I am going to show you that 40 reactions for a meth right and if you look at this is the kinetic data and k f and for a f a f is your pre exponential factor this is your a f and t m these are the coefficient m and this is e is your activation energy these data are obtained right to be obtained from various reaction various experiments course, what are the error involved in it and what are those things. So, and this has to be solved that means, if you look at like number of spaces is 14 in this case right and number of reaction is 40 and backward reaction also to be considered that is being considered from the equilibrium chemistry right which I do not want to I, uh, you know discuss further because it will be quite complex. And this is being used in what you call combustion modeling, and this chemistry cannot work for the you know rich mixtures. For example, you know if 
uh, it can work well for the lean mixtures like when fuel layer ratio is less than stoichiometric ratio right but it cannot work for the this thing so for that you need to go for you know more number of spaces maybe you know 33 32 spaces are required minimum bare required you know and go for something maybe 400 500 reactions right then only you can get some meaningful result otherwise no so what we have seen till now is about kinetics and other things but what are the modes of combustion which will be taking place in a combustion system right what are the things let us look at it is basically a very bars and view i am giving one is flame mode flame means you have seen flame is a part of our life right you have seen flame yes or no right there are various kinds of flame you might have seen but whether you identify that or not but flame can be broadly divided into premix flame and diffusion flame right okay and there is of course uh, people nowadays talking about another flame known as partially premix flame which i have not included here but however it is on the research state people are talking about flameless mode one of them is smoldering do you know what is smoldering like you know some of you might be uh, you know might not be smoking as well right or smoking but you know that when you burn that cigarette you get a something red color you can see in which is propagating right so that is nothing but a smoldering you might have seen some kind of a you know dry leaves being burned but there is no flame but it is still burning right that is known as smoldering combustion right I won't be discussing much about that because that is quite complex in nature, and of course, similar thing might be occurring in your solid propellant combustion as well. But we will not be discussing about it, and what we will be discussing about premix flame and diffusion flame, right? Now, what do we mean by premix flame, where fuel and oxidizer are mixed before actual combustion takes place? We call premix flame, and examples uh, you people are aware that is a Bunsen burner you know and of course, LBG stove that you use in your kitchen for cooking food is an example of premix flame right. And similarly, for the diffusion flame uh, can be defined as fuel and oxidizer are mixed in region where chemical reaction you know takes place that is a diffusion flame. What are the example? Basically, your candle flame you know your weak flame and any natural flame is basically diffusion flame, unnatural flame, man made flame is basically premix flame right that I can say very layman concept. So, the this flame even the combustion can be divided into two categories one is laminar flame other is turbulent flame based on the flow characteristics and uh, keep in mind we will be restricting our discussion to the laminar flame only and or laminar uh, flame based combustion although the practical flames are turbulent in nature right how we will go and do that is of course a not easy task but however there is a way to go talk about turbulent flame in terms of laminar flame characteristics right so, if you look at uh, the what we have done is basically you know simplified and trying to understand fundamentals involved in that. But why flame we need to look at is a question right, why it is important without flame there will be combustion as well right, why you need to look at it and what is a flame by the way we are talking about flame, but what is a flame can anybody define it. You can think of a special domain in which rapid you know chemical reaction of course, exothermic in nature overall way taking place while emitting light right. Of course, there is a some kind of flame which need not to emit light right. Do you know any example the combustion will be taking place and flame will be there, but it is not visible is it possible 
what is that then? If it is possible, can you give an example? Actually, it is possible, but you know that depends upon the kind of fuel and oxidizer you are using, particularly hydrogen and air, of course, clean air, you know, it can be turns out to be very, very faint color, which you cannot really see unless it is dark, okay. In the daytime you cannot really see. And premix flame, as I told earlier, that fuel and oxidizer mixed well at the molecular level before combustion takes place, right. But question is, is it premix flame possible, you know, only when the constituents fuel and oxidizer are in gaseous state or is it possible in the liquid state or is it possible premix flame in the solid state, right. I will just leave that question for you people to think about as you go along, we will see. And examples of premix flame, I have already given Bunsen burner, LPG domestic burners and what about your aerospace application. We can model as a basically, what do you call? The SI engine, spark ignition engine kind of things, where you can consider as a premix and the after burner engine, people consider it as to be premix flame, although need not to be, unless otherwise the spray are quite fine, right. But generally it is being modeled as a, you know, a premix flame, you know, whenever they want to model after burner jet engines. But whereas the actual combustors or the main combustors, you cannot really model with the premix flame, unless otherwise you have designed a premix combustor, which is being going on today, nowadays in order to overcome the problem of emission, right. How to characterize the premix flame then, is a very important question, how to characterize it. And which we will be discussing about, that is basically you would need to look at the burning velocities. What do you mean by burning velocities? We will be learning about it. And so, classification of premix flame can be broadly into two categories, based on the, you know, what is the speed of burning velocity it can be you know speed of uh, it can be more than the speed of sound it can be less than the speed of sound and if it is more than the speed of sound we call it as a detonation and if it is less than that of the speed of sound we call it as a detonation so therefore detonation uh, in case of detonation combustion of traveling at a supersonic speed right that is detonation and whereas deflagration like where the combustion wave will be traveling at a subsonic speed, right. So, we will be basically concentrating on the deflagration. However, maybe uh, in the next lecture, we will be discussing and finding out what is the difference between the detonation and deflagration and look at a combustion wave, because like your shock wave, the combustion is also considered is like a wave. Right. So, how to analyze that and what are the regime, when we will be talking about detonation, deflagration other things, then I will move into the premix flame. So, with this I will stop over, do you have any question to be asked or any doubts you are having. <coughs>